So now we're going to talk about Mohr's circle. Mohr's circle is a graphical representation of all the states of stress that we can use this to graphically determine the stress components acting on a rotated coordinate system. Basically, we have all the equations. This allows us to look at all the states of stress at once and actually do it via geometry instead of doing it via an equation. Now, this entire thing is named after Christian Otto Mohr, who was a civil engineer in the 1800s, 1835 to uh, 1918, I think. He was living in Hanover, which is now part of Germany. And he did, actually, if you want to think about it, if you love that statically indeterminate structure stuff that we did, he's the one that kind of formalized how you would calculate it and how you would look at it. So let's take a look at the, um, a Mohr circle. And so the, the physical significance of Mohr circle for plane stress, once we've established it, we can really simplify it down to geometric considerations. And then we can calculate them or, or just show them off graphically. So this first part we've already kind of done. So as long as we know what our stresses are, I almost wrote uh, normal z there, uh, the normal and the x normal and the y normal and the z, we can plot the circle. Now, when we put together our equations earlier, we kind of talked about, hey, this is the equation of the circle. And so what we have here is our average stress, and this would be the center of our circle, is just those two normal stresses divided by two. And then the radius of that circle is going to be that difference between those two stresses divided by half squared plus the shear stress squared and the square root of that. And those are the two really important concepts, especially for when we're dealing with maxima and minima. And so what we can say is, well, the stress max and min, or this would also be our principles one and two, we'll just be able to plot that as the average plus or minus the radius. And so we'll be able to sweep that circle through there. And in the lab, uh, there is one lab that you will do that will actually, you'll graphically create this using Excel. And then when you take a look at things, you can sit here and go, okay, well, I can, I have an angle here that we sweep to get back to the principal, and I can do all of the trigonometry to get back there because I have opposite over adjacent, and I get my tangent, and when I work all that out, I get tangent to theta p is equal to 2 times the shear stress divided by the normal difference. Now this is, we already knew this because we calculated this out before, but you get the same thing graphically as you did with the equations. Now as we look at this, so if this would be, our element here would be, we'll call that O to X, and then we'll call this one c to x, because that goes from the center to x, this goes from the o out to x. When we rotate the elements, they rotate in the exact same direction. And so that's just something to keep in mind as we're dealing with going between elements and the circle itself. Okay, so how do we end up using this? Oh, there we go. So once we have more circle there, any state of stress is really easy to depict. All we're going to do is angle. We rotate it to what angle we want to, and we're going to look at things with what happens, and we're just going to use trigonometry. Something to point out with more space I forgot to bring up is when you plot a more circle, you plot it into what's called more space. So we're not looking at the X and the Y anymore. We're looking at, we have a normal axis and we have a shear axis. So the Mohr circle will shift along the normal axis because it's all going to depend on what your average stress is. The shear axis will never, you'll never shift off that. You're always going to be on this normal axis. You're never going to shift up and down with the shear stress because there's no function or no mechanism for that to happen. And so that makes things a little bit easier. And also remember, shear stress, positive and negative, we talked about it before, 
you can have positive and negative shear stress is basically just all positive, but when you plot it, you can plot it with positive and negative. Um, another way that you can put together the circle, if you don't want to do the center and then the radius, is what you would do is you would end up plotting these points on a graph and you would do uh, the normal stress comma, because these points are normal comma shear, normal comma shear. You plot those two points, draw the line through it, find the center, rotate the circle. If you really wanted to go old school, you can use a compass to do that. But another thing to point out in more space, because in more space, our shear and normal stresses are 90 degrees apart. And that is not what it was is like in real life, because what is 90 degrees from the normal stress in the x direction? It's the normal stress in the y direction. So in more space, we deal with double angles. So it's basically if you rotate the element 45 degrees in real life, and more space it gets rotated 90 degrees and that's why you're probably wondering why all those equations had two theta in it and that's why because the more circle came before the transformation equations and so that's just kind of how it all flew and there we go so what happens if i want to this is my state of stress x and y what happens if i want to rotate it 30 degrees well 30 degrees clockwise. So I would go 30 degrees clockwise, put it all out, which would be 60 degrees in more space. So 30 degree clockwise rotation would be 2 theta, so that would be a 60 degrees clockwise rotation. And once I would do that, I could sit there and I could draw my triangles and calculate out what the lengths of everything are and how everything's going to be. And just like with our transformation equations, a clockwise rotation is negative, and a counterclockwise rotation is positive. Kind of um, keeps in line with the way that when we do moments, I always choose counterclockwise as positive, and that's just to kind of stay consistent with all the rest of the stuff here. So let's see. Yeah, normal and shear stresses are obtained from the coordinates of the Mohr circle. So Mohr circle is great because you can look at all the states of stress at once and see what's going on. Now let's see how Mohr circle would apply to a situation. So if I'm looking, sitting here looking at axial loading. So my axial loading case right here, load over area is going to be my normal in the x direction. Y shear is zero because everything's going in the normal direction. So what ends up happening is we plot our state of stress here. So this is my Mohr circle. That y point is zero, given here. Shear stress at that point is zero. P over A is x. There's my P over A, and it's not off the axis, so it's zero. So in the axial loading case, we've already got our principal stresses. And so if I wanted to rotate this 45 degrees, and if you remember, when we rotate the coordinate system, the maximum shear stress is 45 degrees off of the main axis. In more space, that would be a 90 degree rotation. So counterclockwise, 90 degrees. And so what happens? Well, if you look at it, my this whole line rotates up to DE. So X becomes whatever the average is, Y becomes whatever the average is, and we're going to maximize out the shear stress and what is the maximum shear stress well it's going to be the exact same uh, i'm blanking on words now it's going to be the exact same magnitude as the normal stress because that's going to be the distance of the radius from here to here and so that's how we'll rotate it 45 degrees to see what's going on and we can also do that with torsional loading so if i look at a normal state of torsional loading and i'm spinning it around what do i have well i have no normal x and y I just have that torsional load so what happens when we plot it well x is uh the normals are zero so here i am on the zero line normal zero normal zero but my shear stress is tc over j that's my maximum point so i plot that 
So if I want to know the principles, what do I do? I rotate it 45 degrees, which means that I'm rotating at 90 degrees because more space is a double angle. And I rotate down to where X becomes B. Excuse me, X becomes A, Y becomes B. And so what happens? Well, this is where we're going to maximize our normal stress. It'll be principal. So we'll have, since this radius is TC over J, we'll have TC over J positive to X, TC over J negative to Y. There's going to be no shear stress, and we've rotated that element 45 degrees. Why do I care? Especially in this case right here, this one's really easy because we've talked about the difference between ductile and brittle material. Ductile material is going to fail in shear when we apply a torsional load. Brittle material is going to apply, is going to apply, is going to fail in normal stress. So remember, ductile material gives us that clean break. Brittle material is going to give us that corkscrewing break. Well, now we can sit here and calculate out exactly what's the amount of force that's going to take to do it because here we're worried about the shear force because that's why ductile materials are weak in shear is because of the way that it spins around here for the normal uh, excuse me the brittle we're going to be worried more about the normal stress and so this is one of those little things that we can play around with to calculate out what the stresses are going to be